Welcome to Calvary Christian Church in Pretoria East, a church that you can call home. We are so thrilled that you've joined us today to worship the Lord this morning. If you are visiting us for the very first time, we welcome you and we want to further connect with you. Please do click on the link below at the bottom of your screen. We are a church that believes in the solid foundation of Christ and we believe in the big E where we exalt Christ, evangelize the lost, encourage the hurting, enrich the community, and we equip the saints. Our mission, transforming the total man by restoring hope to the hopeless, training leaders, and equipping saints to the building of the church where Christ is Lord. Enjoy the service with us.
you can call home. Can we go through our vision and our mission this morning? We believe in the big E's. Shall we go? We exalt Christ. We evangelize the lost. We encourage the hurting. We enrich the community and we equip the saints. Hallelujah. Our mission, transforming the total man by restoring hope to the hopeless, training leaders and equipping saints to the building of the church where Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. You are welcome and we thank you for joining us this beautiful Sunday morning. Hallelujah. My name is Nokobonga and I'll be going through the announcements. I have already welcomed you and I believe that the Lord is going to minister to your life this morning. Hallelujah. If you are joining us for the very first time, please could you please be on your feet so that we can see and acknowledge you. Hallelujah. If you are here for the very first time, kindly take to your feet. Hallelujah. Can we welcome her? Can we welcome the beautiful ladies and gentlemen that are in our midst this morning? Come on, Calvary Christian Church. A warm round of applause. Hallelujah. We thank you for joining us this morning and we trust that God is going to minister to your life. Hallelujah. I'm going to go through our announcements this morning. Hallelujah. If you'd like to become a member, there will be two personnel that come from Communication and Connect that can take you through the process of being a member of the church. Hallelujah. We would like to appreciate everyone that came through to our prayer and fasting for the month of November. We thank you for being with us and as we encounter God, God in this week, take what you have learned. Hallelujah. Can we give God a mighty hand of praise? 
and this is how our week looks this um, week. We are having prayer at half past six in the evening tomorrow, online and on Team Link. We encourage that you join us. We are having our church revival experience from the, from the Thursday to the Sunday, hallelujah, of this week. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We are having Apostle Nero Ratebe. He will be coming all the way from Peter Mar we encourage that you come through and experience God in this place. God is going to be God in this place and you do not want to miss what God is going to do. We encourage that you come through and this is for us. This is a revival for us by us. So we are responsible to take full responsibility of this revival so God can impact our lives. Hallelujah. Please do come through. The times are on the poster and the poster will be shared on our comms line. Hallelujah. Couples are having a gala dinner on the Saturday the 12th of November with our apostle, our dad. Please please if you have um, registered, prepare yourself. It's going to be an auspicious occasion that will be unforgettable. Hallelujah. Membership orientation on the 17th of November. Please do register if you would like to be part of this. Um, this is the last pro part of the process of becoming a member of the church. Groundbreaking prayer on the 19th of November at 8.30 in the morning. Baptism um, on the 26th of November. Um, please register if you'd like to be a part of that. Hallelujah. Our merchandise store is on the website. Please do start purchasing the church t-shirts. They are on the website. All the details you will find there. Hallelujah. We have an artist in our midst that I am going to call up as uh, the media desk helps us with a poster. He is having an event on the 19th of November 2022. Hallelujah. The guests that are going to be joining him are on the screen. We have Gundo, we have Taki, we have Rorupiwa, we have um, Putuma. Hallelujah. Please do um, join us if you'd like to join us. The details are on the screen. The general tickets are 150 50, VIP 300, VVIP 1000. It starts at half past 5 p.m. at Doxadeo in central Pretoria. Hallelujah. Do enjoy the service with us as we welcome Mbumelelo Nguenya. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I would really like to appreciate the leadership for giving me this opportunity. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. No, Yana. No, Yana. No, Yana. No, Yana. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we love you. Lord, there is none like you. No, you're not so mad. Oh, no, you're not. Come on! This is the end of the year! 
that God has laid over his life going forth and beyond that date that the Lord continues to work through his life amen as per custom in our church we can't we can't give you what God can give you but only he can give you what we can't give you 
and we just want to decree a blessing over your life. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, mighty God, we decree and declare that, Father, here is your son, mighty God. We dedicate and commit him unto your hands that, mighty God, you will minister into his life, oh, Father. The ministry you have laid upon his life, oh, God, I pray that, Father, the Levite's anointing will flow in his life and that, Lord God Almighty, it flows straight from the heart. It, straight, it flows straight from the depth of his heart that this ministry is real, that this ministry is, oh, God, for that one that will bring many to the, to the Lord and they will be saved and they'll be healed. They'll be delivered, oh, God, even on the 19th of November, we dedicate every plan every plan that is being put in place that it will work out oh father in the name of Jesus that Lord tickets will be sold that people will attend oh father that oh God it will be the blessing that flows from above that everybody will say the hand of the Lord was upon and is upon the seventh life in the name of Jesus we decree and declare that Lord it is to the honor to the glory and to the praise of your name for there is none that is above you in Jesus mighty name we thank you and we honor you in Jesus name we pray amen and amen may the Lord bless you may he do you well amen hallelujah Hallelujah. Amen. We bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. And um, I just wanted to reiterate that on the 19th, let us go and support him. Amen. He's here so that he can show himself to us. Amen. So that we can follow him on the 19th. Amen. Can we please go and support him? Hallelujah. Otherwise, let us go and continue to praise and to worship the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Romans 8.28 says that now we know that all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. Amen. So join us today as we praise the Lord. Amen. Let's go.
step in the house. You know, we are a church that cares for the total needs of men. Ah, that's need, you know, the... And now we're taking it to the ghetto. We take it home, you know. You know what? Right? Mutsimu amatembe, aneni shumela, 
worship him this morning. Father, the heaven is your throne and the earth is your footstool. You are the God of the armies of Israel. You are holy. You are mighty. You are righteous and you are true. You are the only true God. From the beginning, when you created the heavens and the earth, you were God. You are still God today. And so we glorify you, my Father. We glorify you, King of Kings. We glorify you, Lord of Lords. Mandara Bahasaya. God, a big hand of praise this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. I'd like to call upon uh, Mr. Macheke Cheke to come to the fore. There's uh, an item that he wants to pass. May we be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Um, we are a church that keeps time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, I was told that I'm given um, 10 minutes or less just to come and give you a special announcement. Hallelujah. But I promise 
I won't use the whole 10 minutes. Hallelujah. Mamfundi um, said thank you. Hallelujah. All right. Um, as I said, I'm just here to give you a special announcement. Um, if you can check, we are less than two months to conclude this year. Hallelujah. It's less than two months that we are going to conclude this year. And we can all agree that if we reflect back throughout the year of 2022, we can say Ebenezer. Hallelujah. Thus far, the Lord has brought us. Hallelujah. Each and every one of us, I believe, has a testimony. We were eating good food throughout this year. Hallelujah. We've got something to point. Hallelujah. Then the Lord said to me, as we are singing Ebenezer, we need to remember that for you to be where you are, God used somebody. Hallelujah. God appointed somebody and he used him or them to take us where we are. Hallelujah. So as we sing Ebenezer, we need to remember that God uses people. Hallelujah. In the book of John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus is saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one will come to the Father except through me. In this scripture, we are introduced to what we call the principle of divine protocol. Hallelujah. The principle of divine protocol. God has a way of doing things. And when he does things, he uses people to do those things. This is confirmed in the book of Amos chapter 3, verse 7. It is said, the sovereign Lord will surely do nothing except he reveals his plan to his servants. Hallelujah. So, they are the servants of God who sleep less hours than we do because they have to download the master plan of God for us. Hallelujah. They sacrifice their time with their family so that they can download the master plan for us. Even if you can pray and fast the whole month, God will not use you if you are not appointed. That's the principle of divine protocol. Hallelujah. God will use his servants for you. Then at the end of the year, you will sing Ebenezer and forget that God used somebody. And forget that God appointed a person who was not sleeping for you. Hallelujah. In the book of Luke, chapter 16, verse 29, there was a man this is a rich man. It is said that Lazarus died and the rich man died also. Hallelujah. As he was in hell, he's now talking to Abraham. He's saying, Abraham, send Lazarus to my brother so that they can repent. Then Abraham said, no, no, no. There is a principle of divine protocol. There is Moses and the servants of God. Let them hear them. Hallelujah. It does not need a ghost for you to hear God. There is a principle of divine protocol. Hallelujah. God will use people for your sake. Hallelujah. So this morning, I've been sent to tell you that we need to honor the principle of divine protocol. Hallelujah. Because even if you pray, some of the things won't come to you except through them. Hallelujah. We need to honor them. Hallelujah. So, I want to emphasize this. Do not confuse honor with payment. Hallelujah. Because you cannot pay for what's priceless. You cannot pay for the gospel. The gospel is free and it will remain free. But the means to bring the gospel is not free. Hallelujah. 
our pastor here uses a lot of petrol. He uses his money, his time, a lot of things for our sake. We cannot confuse honoring him with paying him because we cannot pay him for what he's doing. Hallelujah. So, people of God, we are going to start with the pastor's appreciation drive. Hallelujah. We are going to honor the principle of divine protocol. We are gathered here because we've seen what the Lord is doing through him. Amen. Hallelujah. And there's a lot happening in our lives because of them. Hallelujah. I'm saying again, do not confuse honor with payment. Hallelujah. So, this drive is going to start from today. November the 6th. It's going to start from today up until the 10th of December 2022. From today up until the 10th of December 2022. So, you are welcome to appreciate our pastor and mom fundis in any form. Hallelujah. So, if you want to buy groceries for them, you're welcome. Vouchers for whatever, you're welcome. Even money. Hallelujah. You're welcome. Then, if you want to buy groceries, please um, listen to me very carefully. <laughs> I'm not going to say there are certain stores, ne? but I'm saying, um, if you want to buy groceries, please just message the comms line and say, I want to buy groceries for the pastor, then they will in instruct you further. Or you can um, call or WhatsApp them directly. Mfundisi and Mam Fundis. Then, okay, Mam Fundis. Okay. Then they will direct you further. Hallelujah. But if you want to give money, please send any amount to the church's account and reference it, Pastor. Pastor or PS is just fine. Then they will see where the money is directed to. Alternatively, you can put it in an envelope and put it um, in the offering basket. Hallelujah. Is it clear? All right. Now we are going to pray for this drive. Hallelujah. Can you please just put your right hand on your heart and just pray after me. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we've heard about the principle of divine protocol. Oh Lord, please remind me that I have to do this cheerfully. I have to do this willingly, knowing that I'm honoring your principle, knowing that I'm sowing a seed. And as I sow a seed, you will work upon your principle. In the mighty name of Jesus, always remind me not to confuse honor with payment. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. Amen. May we please be on our feet as we continue to worship the Lord this morning. Father, you are holy. You are glorious, mighty, and true. You are righteous. Nobody can be compared to you. You are the Lord God Almighty, who was and who is and who is to come. Nobody can love better than you. Nobody is merciful more than you. Nobody is gracious more than you. I exalt you, O God, lifting your name high. 
Hari bahasa yetere bohoshi. Mendere bahasa tariye bohoshi. Yeka mahasa tariye. Hi paya saate yende bosa. Hendere bahaya shi kaye nere basa. Hie kaye teri bahasa ya You are worthy of glory. And from your throne descends all authority. Be blessed, my Father.
your presence this morning. And we thank you that, Lord, divine power rests in our lives. Divine power surrounds us all. Jesus, we thank you for your hedge of protection. Even when we sleep, we know you are watching over us. When we are here, we know you are watching over us. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for the power that works even on the things we cannot see, oh God. We thank you for the power that works even over the plans of the enemy that we cannot see, oh Father. Because you are a God sovereign above all. You are a God who is king above all. You are a God who fights any battle and never loses any battle. You are God supreme, Lord God Almighty. You are Jehovah who knows the intents of men even before they open their mouths. You are God who fights for us.
the great I am. Amazing God. favor this morning wherever you are standing I want you to hold hands with the person that you are standing next to left and right we're just going to pray together somebody might have come to church and they are asking what kind of a God is this that I've not seen as yet in my life but I want you to pray I don't, I don't care if you know them by name I don't care if you know their history Lord, show up in their life. That's what I want you to ask for this morning. Lord, speak to them in a way unknown to man that you show up in their lives. You don't know what they came carrying as a burden this morning. You don't know how heavy it is. But Lord, show up in their lives. Someone, when they leave here, they're not sure what they're going to eat. But Lord, provide for them. They don't know how they're going to get home, but Lord, do it in their lives. Let it be clean and clear that it is God that has done it. Let it be obvious that somebody prayed for me this morning. That somebody stood in the gap and prayed for my life. Let's begin to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, mighty God, we pray. Father, in this moment and in this time, I commit unto you, O oh God. Lord, O oh God, your people, mighty Savior. In the name of Jesus, mighty God, I pray that you show up, oh God. You show up in the life, oh God. You show up in the needs, oh Father. You show up in the relationships, oh God. You show up, oh Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray that a work that can only be done by God is done in this moment. Is done in this time, oh Father. In the mighty and precious name of Jesus, I pray that Lord God Almighty, let the power and the grace of the Lord minister and speak, oh God. Show up, oh Father. Show up, oh God. Whatever the enemy wants to do, oh God, I speak against it right now. In the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare the joy of 
of the Lord. I decree and I declare the hope in the Lord. I decree and I declare deliverance that flows from you. In the mighty and gracious name of Jesus, we believe and we trust that, Father, your presence, your grace, and your power, your spirit, and your anointing, oh God, will speak in a different way, oh Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray that, Lord, it comes to pass. It takes place even in this hour. It takes place even in this moment. Yes, so oh Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, we stand in the gap. We stand decreeing and declaring that, Lord, it is your presence. It is your grace. It is your power that ministers this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, we give glory and honor and praise unto you. And we thank you. The Lord, you will minister. You will speak, O Father. By the power of the Lord, it is done. By your power it is done, O oh Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you that you are faithful. In Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you that, Father, we have heard your voice as you instructed to hold each other up in prayer, O oh Father. And the blessing that will come unto us will be one of joy when I know my sister has received a blessing because I prayed will be one of joy when I know that what is taking place in this moment is because I prayed Lord I pray that the hopeless heart is hopeful right now I pray that the broken heart is mended right now I pray that the sick body is healed right now I pray that the weak spirit is made strong right now I pray, oh God, Father, that the tears are wiped away right now. I pray that any plan of the enemy is thwarted and broken and it will not come to pass right now. In the name of Jesus, even the diseases that were coming have been stopped right now, oh God. Even the diagnosis that was going to be made in the next two weeks, mighty God, it is healed. Nothing will be found in the name of Jesus Christ. We decree and declare that it is done. And it is so. To the glory and to the honor of your name, O oh Father. Lord, we thank you for the healing of mothers that are not even with us this morning. Yes, O oh God. We thank you that your hand is stretched even to far places, to far lands. In this moment, they will testify something has happened in my life. And it will be because we prayed, O oh Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. We bless your name and we thank you, Father. This morning, mighty God, we want to honor you and to remember you for the sacrifice you gave us in the form of Jesus Christ. When he died on the cross and blood flowed for the sake of us. Lord, we do not choose to ignore such power that flowed. Such a grace that flowed into our families, into our hearts and into our lives. Today we are better men, we are better women, we are better parents, we are better husbands. We are better leaders because there was a sacrifice that was made on the cross. And this morning as we partake in Holy Communion, we pray that the work of the Holy Communion, oh God, Father, had, that has been completed on the cross, is made manifest in our lives. Lord, we pray that the work of the blood changes the heart. The work of the blood works in places that no man can see. And Father, as we do that, we also offer unto you our offering this morning. As we have come to give, we thank you that this is a sign of honor, of worship and glory unto your name. And as we do this, we do this honoring the goodness and the kindness of the Lord in our lives. And we thank you that, Father, as we give this morning, every heart will give what they have intended in their hearts, what has flowed from the heart. That, Father, we are not giving away from our hearts, but we are giving with our hearts. That, Lord, it is to the honor and to the praise of your name. No glory belongs to any man. All of it belongs to you. 
In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. As we come in to partake in Holy Communion, please prepare your offering and allow the ushers to lead you as we come in to give this morning. And may you give from the depth of your heart, knowing that we are honoring the goodness of the Lord and the grace of the Lord in our lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
just thank the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. 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 We've made it a custom in our church that even the smallest things are worth thanksgiving to the Lord. Amen. Even the littlest of things are worth thanksgiving to the Lord. And we know that to some it might not be much, but to us it's worth thanking. It might not be much in value or cost or anything of that nature, but it's for us to say thank you to the Lord. Amen. About three weeks now or four weeks now we've had um, one of our cameras out of service because of something that happened. We don't know what it is. But the Lord this weekend blessed us with our third camera yet again. Amen. And secondly to that, about two weeks ago, we were blessed with a new base amp. Amen for the church. Amen. Even though you don't know what it is, just clap your hands. It's okay. It's okay. Amen. Because I can see some people are clapping. <laughs> you know, but, but also, we're just seeing the Lord really, you know, supplying all our needs. Amen. All our needs. There's a third thing I'm forgetting. I'm just trying to think what it was. My mind just lost its train of thought. I will remember. Amen. If I mention it and you hear me mentioning it with a microphone, just know it's that one. Amen. As we're praying. But we want to take this moment just to say thank you to the Lord. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's our camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our picture camera. The media team, because it's their stuff, they remember. Amen. But the Lord blessed us with a camera as well, with a very nice, you know, uh, thing that are fit for a church. Amen. Amen. But we, we just want to take this moment to say thank you to the Lord. Can you join us together as we just say thank you? Father, we come before your presence and we want to thank you for the blessing and for the provision that you are giving us right here as a church. And Lord, we thank you for this, that it's not necessarily acquired by money only, but it is because you have supplied it to us and given it to us for the glory and for the honor of your name. And Father, we thank you that Lord, even in this moment, every item that we have acquired, mighty God, as we give thanksgiving to you, we know you're going to watch over it to protect it and to watch even when we are sleeping you'll watch over that that equipment oh father in the name of Jesus and this is to the honor and to the glory of your name for you are faithful and you are Lord and you are king in the name of Jesus Christ we pray and we give you honor and glory in Jesus name and amen and amen hallelujah if you have visited us this morning welcome to Calvary Christian Church in Pretoria East, we love the fact that you have chosen to visit us this morning. Amen. And we pray that your visit becomes a permanent stay. Wink, wink. Amen. So please think about it. If you have not thought about it already, because it's easy to think about it, you just say yes. That's when you have thought about it. Amen. So we want to welcome you and we pray that the Lord richly blesses you and he keeps you this morning. Hallelujah. What an awesome prayer week we had the last week. Amen. The Lord really spoke to us and really channeled us to, um, you know, desire an encounter with him. Amen. And if you're not part of it, we're having our last one for the year in the month of December. Please do join us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to say this um, emphatically um, concerning our um, revival experience that's coming up from Thursday up until Sunday. Amen. Amen. This revival is ours. Okay, I want to say that again because your amen sounds like it's got a little bit of sickness in it. This revival is ours. If we don't come, no one will come. So I want to urge you if, uh, you know, no, not if, when you make the time, to come and attend the revival starting on Thursday up until Sunday. Amen. And I would like all the men to stand up on your feet. If you're a man and you're a member of the church, please rise on your feet wherever you are. If you're still figuring it out, we'll pray for you right now. <laughs> on Saturday morning, we've got a special men's gathering at 8.30 in the morning right here at church. And we're inviting you to come as a man. Amen. And we're going to be talking men's cave stuff. 
we will not even elaborate any further than that. Amen. We will leave it at that. So I want to encourage every single one of every man that is standing here that's a member of this church. Even if you're not, you can come through as well. But I want to encourage you to be part of this on Saturday morning, 8.30 to 11. We are here. There will be food. Yeah, so, <laughs> If it's any form of encouragement. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Thank you. Hallelujah. I think my announcements are done. Can we go into the word this morning? How many of us are not ready for the word this morning? I see one hand. Can we start praying right now? Okay. okay. <laughs> Amen. We want to congratulate Orlando Pirates for a good job. Well done. Yesterday. Come on, somebody. Clap hands for Orlando Pirates. There is no sense of jealousy in my spirit <laughs> concerning the win from yesterday. I will tell you why. I will tell you why. Last week I said we must pray for Alondo Pirates. Did I not? Yeah. Did I not? Yeah, I did. If you did not pray, I'm not sure. But I said let's pray for Alondo Pirates. And yesterday when it happened, the Lord said to me, it's because of your prayers <laughs> that it has happened. Come on, somebody. So if there's any other team, Rokasalos, relegation, come, let's pray for you. We'll sort you out. Hey, man. But I was under a lot of pressure this morning. I, I got 17 messages saying, you must talk about Orlando Pirates. <laughs> I said, I will talk about them. Hallelujah. Amen. But we all know which is the big dog in Soweto. Hey, Amen. <laughs> we all know. The book of Daniel chapter number one, from verse number one to verse number two this morning. Hey, Amen. Daniel chapter number one. Verse number one to verse number two. If you have found it, you can say amen. If you are still swiping, we'll wait for you to get to it. If, even if you are also still paging, we'll wait for you. And the Bible reads as follows in Daniel chapter number one, verse number one to verse number two. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand. Somebody say the Lord gave. With some of the articles of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shina to the house of his God. And he brought the articles into the treasure house of his God. Jeremiah chapter number 25, verse number 8 to verse number 9. Jeremiah chapter number 25, verse number 8 to verse number 9. If you have found it, I want you to say amen. amen. I want us all to read together the count of three from the New King James Version. One, two, three. Let's read. Amen. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, because you have not heard my words, behold, I will send and take all the families of the north, says the Lord, and Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and will bring him against this land, against its inhabitants, and against these nations all around. And will utterly destroy them and make them an astonishment, a hissing, and a perpetual desolation. Verse number 9. Behold, I will send and take all the families of the north, says the Lord. And Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant... And will bring them against his, this land, against its inhabitants, and against these nations all around. And will utterly destroy them and make them an astonishment, a hissing, and a perpetual, or, or, and perpetual desolations. Father, speak to us this morning, minister to our hearts. We thank you for the power of your word and for the work that you will do through your word in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. I want to share with you quickly under a subject which is not a series. Amen. Amen. Jesus loves us. He's delivering us from services. Amen. Unusual servants. Unusual 
servants. I want you to say to your neighbor, unusual servants. Come on, speak to them until they can smile. Unusual servants. Is your name, you're not smiling. I don't see you. Okay, yeah, that's much better. That's it. <laughs> Amen. Unusual servants. The discrimination and the hurt that the church has caused also flows from what I'm about to say. It flows from what we would generally call from a psychoanalysis perspective what we would call stereotype. Amen. Amen. Stereotype simply relates to the fact that we have got a biased approach to how somebody should look just because they don't look how we think they should look. So we've got an attitude that develops to a fellow believer because you don't look like a believer. And stereotype is quite dangerous because it has made certain people miss opportunities that were meant for them because they've got stereotype. Unfortunately, stereotype has also built hashtags that have made you miss opportunities to ascend in life just because of a stereotype. And just because somebody does not look rich doesn't mean they are poor. I know you like that one. That one I know you're going to say, yeah, that's very true. There I know you're going to hit the nail on the head. <laughs> there are people that are great, but they are quiet. And usually the loudest ones are empty. They've got nothing inside because anything with something inside makes less noise. They always say, still water runs deep. Are we together? And many a times we have found ourselves praising tadpoles like they're fish. Because of stereotypes. And that is why certain people blend into Christianity because they dress the stereo, not because they are Christians. So they are able to find themselves fitting into the crowd just because they have dressed the type. And guess what? They fool you and me because we don't know it is a wolf in sheep's skin. It is not a sheep. So we often embrace wolves without knowing because of our stereotype. And that is why Paul encourages us. He says, above all, get your spirit of discernment. Get your discerning, your frequency of discernment up. Because discernment does not look at stereos. It looks at what is in the heart. It's able to see what is in the heart. Unusual. Seventh. And let me bring it home. I won't preach for long this morning, but I will tell you something important. Watch this. Because of stereotype, we have missed God's servants. You're going to get me just now. Right? Because we expected the service of God to come dressed in this nature and we missed God in that space. We miss God in that space. Why? Because he did not look like a pastor. He, she did not look like the one sent from God. The Bible says John the Baptist was the one who would not even bath. Who would not even, you know, take care of his skin with avocado. He would be staying in the bushes, eating honey and eating, you know, things of the bush. But he was still a servant. Jesus was baptized by somebody he was cleaner than. Why? Because it is not stereotype as to how a servant of God must look. And this does not discard the conduct, by the way. 
don't confuse this. Don't confuse it. And say the servant of the Lord can do whatever he wants. No, 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 no. There is a conduct that is required. So let's not forget that, right? Jesus says, John, I'm okay to be baptized. If me and you were to be baptized by John this hour, this today, I think we would refuse because I drive better than you. We would refuse because I stay in an estate that has got security more than yours. And we would refuse because you stay in Sunnyside, I stay in Silver Lakes. They both start with an S, but they are not of the same level. You can't baptize me. Because of stereotype. And the Lord spoke to me about this five weeks, no, in fact, eight weeks ago. About this word. And he said, my servants don't get discarded because they don't meet your feet. And we're going to get into what we read just now. Daniel, we know, is famous for the interpretation of dreams, number one. He's, in, he's famous also for seeing the visions of things that are to come, number two. Right. But also we know him because he was part of the pack of boys who went on to 21 days of only eating clean food. He's one of the few characters in the Bible whom a fast was named after. Daniel's fast. And then there's another one, Esther's fast. I don't know of any other kind of fast that has been named after a character of the Bible. But he was there. And we see, if you read verse number 17, you'll see that they did not eat, or 15, 16, 17, they did not eat, you know, the king's delicacies, all good and well, all wonderful. But how did Daniel get to Babylon? Is what I'm focusing on today. Daniel got to Babylon we then realize he got to Babylon because King Nebuchadnezzar besieged or attacked the nation of Judah when he attacked the nation of Judah anytime they wanted to prove their power over a nation guess what they subdued the people of that nation in their own nation so what did they do they would take those people to their land and they would go as trophies that you see, we want Judah to show that we want Judah. Look at their men working for us. So slavery would be a form or exile would be a form of showing forth that we have really conquered. That is why we're able to take them from their land and bring them here. But secondly, we not only take them from their land, we would also take them from their God. And that is why when Christianity came in the, early, in the early years, the problem was it sounded and it is predominantly a kingdom. It sounded like it is challenging the Roman Empire. And because it is a kingdom, there was problems. That's why when, Jude, well, rather when Jesus was born, he wanted to be killed by another king, not by a servant, by another king. Why? Because a new kingdom was entering the fray. That is why the attack was not issued by a prime minister or by one. It was issued by the top key leader in the land to say, look for a two-year-old. How do you look for a two-year-old? Because it's not the size that matters. It is what he carries that matters. Some people are not reacting because of your portfolio in the company. They are not reacting because of who you are married to. They are not reacting because of what you drive. They are reacting because of what you carry. You might be the smallest in that boardroom, but who you carry is greater than any head in that boardroom. And sometimes we wonder, why am I being attacked? It's got nothing to do with you. It's who you carry. It's who? And watch the Bible then says, Nebuchadnezzar besieged Babylon. When he besieged Babylon, the Bible says he carried the people. He carried the artifacts of God. And he put them in his own temple of his own God. This was to show that this is total annihilation of this nation. Annihilation of this nation. That's a rhyme. Annihilation of this nation. 
I was a rapper in my former life. Amen. <laughs> now watch this. They would take them not only from their land, but also from their God. And the reason of taking the artifacts into their God's temple is so that they can show even their God is subdued to us. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. Even their God is what? Is subdued to us. So there's nothing that could happen. Huh? There's nothing that can happen. And Jeremiah reveals to us through God himself. There are things that happen in our lives and we underappreciate them because we don't know why. I'm going to get somewhere, right? Tell your neighbor we are getting somewhere. There, there are things that happen in our lives. We downplay them because we don't know why. The value is not in what is happening. The value is in why it is happening. There are things that when they happen, they bring confusion to reality in our lives. Have you ever been into a place where you say, Lord, I tithe, I give, I am faithful, I attend all services, but things are not going well. Things are not going, they're not coming together. I mean, I serve in this department faithfully, but things, we, we, we are looking for the why it's happening. Because the what we can obviously see is happening. And the Lord says, because you have not heard my word and heeded to my statutes. Jeremiah 25 verse number 8 and verse number 9. He says, now I will send Nebuchadnezzar my servant. <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar would have established already that he does not serve Jehovah the living God. We have established already that he has his own God. But what God says, I will send Nebuchadnezzar my servant. We have established that Nebuchadnezzar does not pray like me and you. We have established that Nebuchadnezzar cannot speak in tongues to save his lives. But God says, I will send Nebuchadnezzar my servant. We have established that Nebuchadnezzar does not come to church every Sunday. Nebuchadnezzar is a mean boss above my head. But God says, I will send Nebuchadnezzar my servant. The servants of the Lord don't have to be dressed the way you expect them to be dressed. The servants of the Lord don't have to speak like you. But it is the Lord who takes ownership and he says, my servant Nebuchadnezzar. Oh my God. And the Lord said the powerful thing. He says, every one of you has got unusual servants that are mine. They don't belong to any church. They don't belong to anyone, but they belong to me. Why? Because they are there to serve my purpose. To serve God's purpose. Let me bring it home. Watch. You are there sitting in a position where you dislike Nebuchadnezzar. But it doesn't change his portfolio. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to bring it home to you. You are there wondering why this particular person is not being killed by God. Have you ever taken a moment to step back and realize that this is an unusual servant that has been sent my way to work on me, to sharpen me and to shift me to my next dimension. So I began to take a reflection. I took a couple of steps back. And I looked for unusual servants in my life. <laughs> there was a time and a season where I thought this thing is not working out. But God was building me through an unusual servant. Oh, there are times when I thought there is no future. There is no direction. But guess what? God was using an unusual servant. Uh, the fact that God is using an unusual servant does not mean he does not like you. I'm about to close because the point has been hit. Watch here. 
Jeremiah 29. Right? Right? Verse number 8, 9, 10, and 11. We know, we know 11. For my plans for you are not to harm you, but to prosper you, to give you a hope and a bright future. All that we quote it without understanding the context. Huh? This passage of scripture was being spoken in exile. Was being spoken in the midst of being bonded by people that are not even God's people. But let me take a couple of steps back. Verse number 8 and if not verse number 9. The Bible says for 70 years. For you will be in Babylon. For 70 years you will be what? There are times you are picking to leave in the first year and God must remind you. There's still 69 years remaining. Yeah, you're not going to like me. Right? Have you ever heard God reminding you don't leave this place? You still have 70 more years in this place. What was God saying? It was God speaking. He says build houses. You thought I'm going to liberate you in the first year. No, build houses. He even said marry wives. Go read it. He even said, pray for the peace of this land. For the peace of this land is your peace. Imagine when God asks you to pray for Nebuchadnezzar. Why should you pray for Nebuchadnezzar? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because Nebuchadnezzar did not come by himself. God says, I will allow him to take over. I will allow him to be boss over your life. Why? Because he's my servant. Unusual. Servant. Tell your neighbor, let's wrap it up. Watch. Uh, uh, this is number three. Uh, wow. Watch. Watch this. Immediately, when God speaks in Jeremiah chapter number 29, verse number 11, he says, my plans for you are not to harm you. I want to stop on that line, right? I don't want to go any further. I want to stop on that. My plans for you he is saying, Nebuchadnezzar is my plan. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, this side they are not in church. Let's go there. He says, Nebuchadnezzar is my plan. He is saying, it's not a mistake that you have got an issue with Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar is part of the process. He is not the end of the journey. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nebuchadnezzar is only part a catalyst to sort you out so that you can get where you are supposed to be. Hey, everybody needs a Nebuchadnezzar, which is an unusual servant of the Lord. Everybody needs a Nebuchadnezzar who is going to make them shift from a place of comfort to a place of growth because growth doesn't have to be comfortable but growth is necessary. Nebuchadnezzar is my plan. He is my plan. Watch. He says the following. He says, Nebuchadnezzar, whatever you're hiding under the chair, I don't know, it will be revealed right now. <laughs> he says, my plans for you, despite the fact that Nebuchadnezzar has come into your life. Nebuchadnezzar, come. Lotta, come. I know you've always wanted to appear on camera. Come. It's the first time now. It's not the last time. Watch. The fact that Nebuchadnezzar has appeared in your life doesn't mean my plan is over. In fact, it's just beginning. It's just beginning. The, the appearance
importance of Nebuchadnezzar in your life is to make sure that my plan comes to pass. Right? So the point of Nebuchadnezzar is to move you from a place of comfort. Right? So he wants to make sure that you move. Guess what? When you move from a place of comfort, the next place you're going to move to is on your knees. <laughs> my plan with Nebuchadnezzar is not to destroy you, but it is to grow you. Watch the next thing when Nebuchadnezzar oppresses you. The next thing you're going to do is to sleep in his presence. My plan with Nebuchadnezzar is not to destroy you, but it is actually to grow you. Ah, when Paul was getting puffed up and he was getting too proud, guess what? God sent a thorn. That is my servant. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. You got to understand this. When Joseph needed a lift to Egypt so that he can fulfill the will of the Lord, God gave him brothers that hated him. Everybody needs an unusual servant in their lives. Everybody needs an unusual servant in their lives. you got to understand, some of the bosses, God is not going to get rid of them. It's an unusual servant that is there to make sure that you don't sit on your laurels, but you get closer to the Lord, that you don't sit back and sleep on the place which you have not been called to, but you get closer to the Lord. You get closer to the Lord. Watch this. When we were younger, when we were, would get woken up in the morning by mama and she'd say, I want you all to have tea. Huh? It was not bread and butter. It was bread and bottle raw. <laughs> butter is nice. But butro, butro, butro is something else. Are we together? And what mama would do is that every time the, the bottle is finished, what she would do is that she would give it to us for scuffing to, to school because we couldn't afford tape away. So we'd have to use an old drama scuffing so that we can just get to work, rather to school, sorry, to school and carry our lunch. But in the mornings, we would sit there. You hold the cup. We would sit there. And should give us to what should give us our tea. I don't know what they call this thing in English, but in the bigiri. <laughs> bigiri is a is a steel cup. You know that steel one? That one? Yeah. Right. So should give it to us. Right. And we would not be able to hold it because it's too hot. And then she would bring another servant. You would pour the water, the, the tea into the saucer ah, what you could not handle in the cup God brings another servant to work out your miracle God brings another servant to work out your food I'm saying the cup is too hot but don't give up on the Lord he's still working he's still working he's bringing another servant that's going to work it out for your good Oh, when he needed to fix the Israelites, he said, Not 40 days, but 40 years. Another servant. And guess what? Jesus also had an unusual servant, he was the treasurer of the church. Without him, there would not be any crucifixion. There is another servant in your life that is just there to usher you to your purpose. To usher you to your destination. And if you checked your life, what drove you close to God was a storm. What made you pray harder was a storm. <laughs> what made you enter a territory of tongue speaking was a storm. <laughs> what woke you up in the middle of the night and you saw the face of the Lord non-stop. The children asking what is wrong was a storm. What made Peter walk out of the boat and walk on the water was a storm. Why? Because God 
Here's unusual servants. Unusual servants. Do you understand? The roses your husband bought you have thorns on them. Husbands, hint, hint. The roses he bought for you have got thorns. What we do is we remove the thorns. We don't destroy the rose. Look at your neighbor and smile like the pastor is smiling. Watch. We keep the rose because the thorns don't mean beauty is gone. The thorns don't mean beauty is gone. What we are pricing is not the thorns. What we are pricing is what is on top. You know what God is doing? He's making sure that when you arrive on the sales desk, you've got no thorns on you. Nebuchadnezzar must be there to cut away some things. Because God uses unusual servants. He does not use servants that fit your scope of acceptance. He does not use servants that believe in your systems. Or oh, can I be controversial right now? He does not use servants that believe in him. But they are still his servants. He said, I will harden Pharaoh's heart. Even though he believes in whatever, but he's still my servant. What Pharaoh did not know is that he's holding on to the Israelites not because he wants to, but because God hardened his heart. He's still my servant. I want to speak to somebody this morning. You've been knocking on the door of that promotion, but God is using his servant just to delay you a bit. Because if you get it now, it will be a freezed position in two months. So he's delaying you until the finances of the company are right so that when the position is employed for you, it is a permanent position. It is not a mistake. Then it's not going to be first in, first out, last in, last out. No, it's not going to work like that because the permanent position must be made permanent but delaying is part of the process. My time is up. I have to close here. But I'm going to close with this. You have been thinking God has forgotten you. But God is reminding you, Nebuchadnezzar is my plan. The interpretation of the dreams that we read today of Daniel would not happen if he was not in Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar is my plan. There was a time even before this church started. Amen. <laughs> even before this church started. We're not here because this church started. We are here because we believe in God. <laughs> we would go up to the mountain to pray for three hours. Why? That you, we need to develop a culture of prayer in you because you will lead people to prayerlessness if you don't pray. So let me use Nebuchadnezzar to make you kneel more so that by the time you're supposed to lead someone, you're leading them to a place you have been. I need to close with this one for the fifth time and the last time. Genesis chapter 50, verse 20, put it up. 5 0. Verse 20. Put it up and we close. Put it up. Quickly. Watch. 
I want us all to read it together. One, two, three, in the count of three, I believe it's going to pop up. Yeah. One, two, three, let's read. But as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring about as it is this day to save many people alive. What is Joseph saying? He's saying, God uses evil plans to bring me to the good. I heard you guys praising the Lord this morning, which is all good and well. They are working for my good. They are working for my good. They are working for my good. But you see, when he works them at times, he makes them not to work so that they can work. As you think they are working, they are not working so that they can actually work. He delays them so that they can be timeless for you. It's working by not working. Can you praise the Lord when it's not working and say it's working for my good? Ah, uh, can you praise the Lord when it seems like it's not running well and you say it's still working for my good? What you meant for evil. Nebuchadnezzar thought he was getting slaves, but he was just pruning the people of God. talking to three groups of people this morning as we're going to pray. The first group of people that I'm talking to have finished their 70 years. But they did not recognize the job of Nebuchadnezzar. Their 70 years is up. But they don't know what Nebuchadnezzar was there for. And God says, see why I sent him as my servant. Number two, second group of people. I'm talking to people who are in 35 years with Nebuchadnezzar. They are in the middle of the journey. And they think God has left them. He says, he's still my servant. She's still my servant. And the third group of people. You've not met Nebuchadnezzar. I've got bad news for you. He's coming. He's coming. You better be prepared to see him as God's servant. And say thank you Lord. Now I don't boast anything else. I boast about my weaknesses. Because your grace is made sufficient in my weaknesses. I see the need for Nebuchadnezzar in my life. The reason Jesus could share Holy Communion with Judas is because he saw the need of Nebuchadnezzar in his life. The reason why he could heal the ear of the man who captured him and Peter cut off the ear is because he saw the need of Nebuchadnezzar in his life. If I don't have Nebuchadnezzar, I won't get to the cross. If I don't have Nebuchadnezzar, I won't get to the place where I need to get to. And we're going to pray this morning. I want you to close your eyes. We're going to pray. <sighs> Who is your Nebuchadnezzar? Who is the unusual servant of the Lord in your life? Working your life. Working your journey. So that by the time you get to your destination, you are completely ready for what God wants to do in your life. Who is the unusual servant that God has deployed over your life? I don't pray specifically with this people here, this group of people here. You are frustrated. You want to give up. You want to walk out. You want to walk away. But he says, that's my servant. 
that I'm using. That's my servant that I'm using. And he wants you to recognize Nebuchadnezzar as his servant. If you are that person that wants to really give up, he said, Lord, give me courage. Let me see Nebuchadnezzar in my life. I want you to come and we pray together. You come to the fourth. We're going to pray. Keep me true, Lord Jesus, keep me true. I'm still using my servant. I'm still using my servant to work it out. Believe in my work. Believe and trust what I'm doing. And you will see that the race is not over because I'm giving you strength. And Father, in the name of Jesus, mighty God, we decree and declare that Father, Lord, oh God, let the eyes be opened to see, oh God, to see Nebuchadnezzar, to see the work that must be done, oh Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray right now the Lord God Almighty, you give strength. You give strength. No giving up. No giving up. You give strength in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I pray that mighty God, the heart will not give up. The heart will not give in. The heart will not throw in the towel. In the name of Jesus, I pray the Lord let there be strength. Strength rejuvenated. Strength given up again, oh Father. See, Kamosa Talamahaya. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that mighty God let the Lord rest, oh God, and move, oh Father. Speak and minister, oh Father. In the name of Jesus, let power, let grace be there, oh Father. Lord, they will not give up. She will not give up, oh God. She will continue running the race up. Running the race up, running the race up. In the name of Jesus, I speak strength. I speak strength right now. I speak strength into the heart. I speak strength into the heart. Lord, no thoughts. No thoughts of demise. No thoughts of destruction. I speak against them right now. That Father, it is your hand and it is your power that ministers. Simon Kontadabaha. Your purpose will not fail. Your purpose will not fail. What God has anointed and called you for, it will not fail. Yes, God is still working. God is still working. Nebuchadnezzar is only part of the plan. See the work of the Lord. See the hand of the Lord. See the grace of the Lord as it keeps you, as it keeps you as it walks with you sima kotono mo sa sa katana bahasa mende de kesia in the name of Jesus 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 the work of the Lord will not fail the work of the Lord will not fail the work of the Lord will not fail the purpose of the Lord will not fail Lord I pray for strength oh God I pray that you rejuvenate the prayer chambers the place of seeking after you the Lord oh God we will know we will see and experience the work of the Lord in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Mighty God, you complete your work. 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 See my cotonomosa in the mighty and precious name of Jesus. I pray that mighty God, Lord, let there be strength. Let there be grace. Let there be grace. Let there be grace. 
for the Lord says my grace is sufficient for you my grace will sustain you my grace will carry you my grace will walk with you my grace will move with you he says don't give up don't throw in the towel the Lord says I will walk with you I am with you says the Lord I am with you says the Lord I am with you says the Lord in the name of Jesus mighty God I pray that hope is rejuvenated oh God hope is rejuvenated in the name of Jesus Lord I pray that mighty God Nebuchadnezzar's work is completed because you have sent him in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus mighty God I speak and I I decree grace that flows from you grace that flows from you in the name of Jesus the Lord the work of Nebuchadnezzar will be complete and your glory will be brought forth in the name of Jesus Christ we thank you for you are faithful in Jesus mighty name we thank you Lord I want everybody to raise up their hands in the building and father we might not have mentioned the situation by name we might not have mentioned the issue by what it's called but father you know it and that's the most important thing Lord, I pray that your grace envelopes and carries your children. Lord, some of them think that it's not going to come. When it comes, carry them through it, oh Father. Walk with them through it. Because this is just an unusual servant that has been sent to do the work of the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Jesus exposes, or God, that Paul exposes us to this truth in the book of 2 Corinthians. In fact, 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter number 2. And he says, had they known, they would not have crucified. But thankfully, they did not know so that they can crucify. There are things that you are hoping your boss knows, but he will not know on purpose. So that crucifixion must happen. Because without crucifixion, there is no saving of lives. Your CVs have been rejected left, right and center. You don't know why. But God says, it's my servant. Sometimes we are praying against curses that are not curses. They are just servants that God has sent to sharpen and build what he desires out of you. Was that a good word? Come on, let's bless the Lord. If you have joined us online, God bless you. Thank you so much. Some of the Nebuchadnezzar. We hope you enjoyed the this- It's not a joke. And if you have given your life to Christ or in need of prayer, please don't hesitate to contact us on our WhatsApp comms line. Someone is waiting on the other line to pray with you. If you are interested in joining us as a church, we do have Monday prayers on Team Link every Monday and we have My Growth on Wednesday on Team Link as well. Otherwise, see you on Sunday.